Okay, let's um, call the meeting to order. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands. Okay, we're going to request a moment of silence for Barbara E. Dunlap Lackey, a uh, graduate of the North Syracuse Central School District, Kayla N. Elmore, a 2011 graduate of the North Syracuse Central School District, Lawrence Hess, who attended schools in the North Syracuse Central School District, and Patricia Van Bethison, a 1964 graduate of the North Syracuse Central School District. Okay, we'll move into um, presentations. This um, first presentation is uh, Maintenance and Operations Appreciation Week. Do we have Anybody here from MNO besides? No? Okay. North Syracuse Central School District, the proclamation is the appearance of our buildings and grounds have significant impact on the environment for suitable learning for our students, working conditions for district employees, and its sense of pride for our community. The maintenance and operations department employees contribute to the school family and community by upholding professional work standards, receiving timely training, and approaching all tasks in a strong collective spirit of teamwork, which contributes to their overall work effectiveness. They exhibit diligence, patience, and professionalism in adjusting to new challenges and, and situations that occur in the school buildings and grounds. To honor the maintenance and operations department employees of the North Syracuse Central School District, and their accomplishments. I, Pat Swoboda, President of the Board of Education of the North Syracuse Central School District, on behalf of the board, express our deepest gratitude and hereby declare the week of September 14th, 2015, 2015 through September 18th, 2015 as Maintenance and Operations Appreciation Week. The recommended action is to declare this week as maintenance and operations appreciation week do we need a motion for that we have a do we have a motion miss scanlon miss cash all in favor that's unanimous since nobody's here we'll pass on those thank you okay summer accomplishments um <laughs> it's a long list of you guys here mm -hmm. we have dan bowles don keegan don um, and Jason good evening I'll, I'll kick it off if that's okay with uh, well as always it's a it was a busy summer um, we got a lot done I'd like to talk about a few areas uh, first information technology um, one of the things we've learned is that our, at the lower grades, iPads, the touch technology, is uh, so much more effective with the younger children. And we did uh, very successfully iPads in kindergarten uh, last year, and uh, I'm sorry, in first grade last year, and we did uh, put iPads into kindergarten this summer, and the kids have begun using those. Uh, today we received our first shipment of Google Chromebooks, and we're really excited about that. We're going to pilot Chromebooks in the elementary and that will allow uh, our teachers to uh, get comfortable with this new technology. Um, and we think this really is going to provide opportunities uh, that we'll, uh, we'll be able to build on in future years. Upgraded uh, middle school and Lakeshore uh, Road teacher stations, as we do every year. We try to keep the, uh, the, the uh, classroom equipment current. Um, uh, we upgraded 11 labs at the junior high and, the, and CNS, the elementary schools. Um, we, uh, effective June 29th, uh, we asked BOCES to take over our uh, district's network. 
and uh, we upgraded the fiber at the district office as well as uh, switches uh, to uh, increase the bandwidth and capacity and the reliability of our network. I have to tell you this has been a, a, a great process, but it's one of those processes that probably is uh, the analogy of two steps forward and one step back probably fits it well. Uh, we, uh, we each day seem to uh, find new and exciting things to uh, improve the user experience and then we break something. So we're, we're working hard to, um, uh, to uh, uh, make things better, uh, but we're, we're in those early stages and it's been a bit of a bumpy road. Um, I will tell you that uh, we've identified a few uh, issues and, and this, this is another analogy that, that is, fits perfectly for uh, technology. Um, you know, the, uh, 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 the uh, chain is only as strong as the weakest link and we find that uh, there's a lot of uh, things that need to be connected from the classroom all the way back to the district office and the internet and we have a, a large quantity of unmanaged mini hubs and switches throughout the district and those represent bottlenecks. It's kind of like being on the, uh, on the thruway and exiting onto a dirt road with lots of traffic. <laughs> so we're finding those things, we're, we're fixing them. Uh, the other one we're working on is group policy. So we had a very productive summer in the area of IT. Uh, we got a lot more work to do and uh, that work is underway. In the area of maintenance and operations, I know many of you had an opportunity to go and look at the credit union and commons area. John Ward, uh, I, have to, I have to applaud him and his guys. They worked extremely hard on that. Uh, we're on the, on, on the final uh, stretch of, of wrapping up that work, uh, but I think that's going to be a source of great pride for CNS, um, both the credit union and that commons area. Uh, the Wi-Fi is up and operating, and it should be great for the students and staff. Um, we uh, made some changes in the special ed uh, location of the classroom there and we needed to install a handicapped bathroom uh, to, uh, uh, to accommodate those students and that was done. Uh, we launched a new custodial training program which we're very proud of um, uh, working with our, with our staff to provide them with some online resources and, uh, and additional training. Uh, uh, John has worked incredibly closely with uh, Tim Bednarski and the athletic department uh, in terms of field maintenance and you can see the things that we've done here uh, in terms of uh, uh, top dressing and fertilizing and seeding athletic fields and rebuilding uh, infield and pitchers mound at, uh, at the junior high and, um, and so we're, we're really I think uh, hitting on all cylinders in terms of having our M&O department work very closely with athletics uh, to try to uh, uh, make sure that the uh, facilities uh, meet the needs of our athletic programs. Uh, did a lot of rep uh, repair work on catch basins throughout the district. Uh, as everybody knows, we had a very rainy June and then a pretty dry summer. And uh, we'll see how uh, th this work will pay off as we uh, head into the fall here and have, um, have more uh, precipitation. A lot of potholes and the usual work we do on parking lots and whatnot. And, and then uh, something that I find, uh, uh, you know, miraculous is the amount of cleaning that gets done in the summer. It's a full, you know, full sprint. And uh, um, as anybody that's been in our buildings, the opening day of school, uh, our crew did a nice job uh, getting the buildings ready for opening day. I won't take you through everything on this list, but uh, our business office, this is our busy time in the business office, closing the books, getting ready for the audit. Our audit is underway right now. Uh, we're we're uh, uh, in the, in the wind-down stages of that, and we look forward to coming back to the board with the, uh, with the results uh, of the audit and having the auditors present to you. Uh, transportation had a great summer. Uh, you know, every summer they do the routing, and uh, this summer we were really uh, thrilled with the uh, uh, the job fair that the transportation folks put on. Attracted a lot of uh, really great uh, quality folks. Um, they did a lot of uh, summer transportation, as they always do. People think we're closed down in the summer, but we transport for uh, a summer school and special needs summer school, as well as uh, um, you know we did it, we did a summer program uh, transportation at Roxborough Road Middle School. Um, over the summer, we, we put together uh, all of our routing and, as I mentioned earlier, and, uh, and we had a really successful bid process working with uh, uh, the representat representatives of our uh, uh, drivers and attendance union, and uh, we're real happy with the way the routing worked out this year. We had a smooth opening uh, as a result of that. And then food service, uh, again, we completed our year-end accounting. We, uh, as reported previously to the board, we had a lower than expected loss. Uh, we're in the process now of processing all those free and reduced lunch applications and, um, and uh, very busy with that. Um, and we, we started this year uh, a program uh, for our summer school, a CNS summer snack and vending program, and that program was, uh, was in fact successful. We think we, 
we were able to provide some much needed nourishment to our summer school students through food service and did it in an economical way that did not further stress the financials of the food service organization and that's the that's kind of the operation side of things i'll turn it over to on for curriculum thank you so you can see above um all of the things that we were busy with this summer it was um as we said there were very little rooms at the inn for work this summer they were all seemed to all be filled so we have a reading study committee that's happening right now um which is a k-9 group um k-9 educator group sounds like a dog when i say that <laughs> um that are come coming together and talking about what will we do with reading in those areas um as you know your board policy states that we have to study for a year before we implement anything so we've been in the process of studying and looking at what guided reading entails and trying to come up with a good plan and understanding good solid reading instruction before we choose the materials that we'll move forward with we have a grading committee um, which has about 35 people that are involved in the district and as you probably recall including our board president um, that we sent through the stle uh, money last year the grant we were allowed to send people to see um, rick warmly who is the author of fair is and always equal um, and starting to talk about our grading practices um, and looking at our policies so that by spring we'll be offering um, the board of education an opportunity to hear more about it and some recommendations of how to um, improve our policies on grading and our practices within the classroom Special Education Committee, um, as you know, Annette has been running that, so that we sent some people to the SU Leadership Conference this summer. We had an opportunity, SU offered us six scholarships to send people to this leadership conference, so we were fortunate to be the recipient of that, as well as to have Lisa Goldberg and um, Val DeFlorio working on co-teaching within the district, so they offered opportunities to run different workshops through different teachers being the leaders of that so different co-teaching pairs were had the opportunity to work with groups donna marie did quite a bit of work this summer as well um, we're very fortunate to have her offer through our curriculum process um, she did all of her social studies which finally the state decided to come out with so she started with the 5-8 group um, high school always needs its tweaking on social studies but she started the new process the new document that was adopted by the state she started her work in the 5-8 area so along with that curriculum process one of the stages or steps within that is how to build formative and summative assessments as you're um, implementing your curriculum within the classroom so Donna Marie brings groups together and she teaches them how to because we're not psychometricians teaches them how to look at questions and what it, what how to bring that rigor into um, test building. So she offers that, and that's a stage that all of the curriculums listed above will have each of the groups go through with her offering that to our groups. Lucy Calkins off and running. Um, the exciting part about this is we had um, excitement all the way through 12th grade. So we had high school teachers interested in what's happening. As you know, our movement started K-4. We're now at the K-8 look with high school joining us in that look um, of offering more writing instruction all the way through 12th grade, which has been really, really exciting for us. And then the high school had obvious um, needs to build this financial course with the new credit union moving in. And then you can see all of the course all of the curriculum work that we did this summer one of them being we have science probes that john rice was um, really wanting them to build more labs around so that it became more practical they had them but they started to build more labs to incorporate that into the curriculum and then listed below is all of the curriculum for the first time ever we have a k-12 ela and math curriculum that are fully aligned um, and it's really really exciting they prioritize their curriculum so not only do we have the curriculum document that was adopted from the state that was brought to the local level but we also have prioritized curriculum which means that all of the curriculum is important but there are certain standards that hold more weight and that need to be more 
you know, emphasized more than others. But you can see that we did a lot of work. Dan worked with library, he worked with ELL, we worked with K-12, we have a K-12 um, physical education that we also aligned. We did health and social studies, FACTS, PLTW, which is Project Lead the Way. Um, you can see that we did a lot of work this summer. So, and Dan will continue. Besides Don, I'm the other guy that has the calculator. That's one of the things as far as class size and numbers, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, BPT, our building planning teams uh, trying to organize uh, their staff around goals. Um, one of the things that we have spent some considerable time doing is trying to make the process very collaborative so that people are talking about best practices instead of trying to do something in a vacuum, sharing what's working in schools in grade levels that are being successful. So we bring them all together and we start with the elementary in the morning, bring them all together. We brainstorm, put things on the wall, have them talking about what they're doing that they're finding success with. Um, then we get them talking. Uh, other uh, teachers and building principals start asking questions of each other, quizzing each other about how do I go about doing that? How do I go about implementing this? And that process, we've done that, I believe it's our third year, and the feedback that we're getting, um, they're feeling better about the process instead of it just being percentages here, percentages there. We're talking about what's happening in the classroom instructionally and what's working in some buildings and how can we replicate that across the district. With uh, English language learners, one of the things that uh, the state is doing is they have revamped their processes and they're trying to make it so that our students that are not native speak speakers are more successful and they've taken the guidelines and they've just about doubled the requirements for districts and what we need to do to help students who are not native speakers of English be successful. Um, so the new regulations are very strict. Um, a lot of the people within BOCES are struggling to try to meet the new guidelines, but the state is not giving us um, exact parameters. They're, they're having us try to do something, but they're not giving us any resources or the means to do so. Uh, what they tell us at BOCES is do the best you can right now and we'll get back to you. So one of the things that we uh, did in the district was we did hire another full-time ELL teacher to help meet the demands that the state is going to be asking and uh, so that we're meeting the students' needs and the criteria for the state. Um, we sent all of our ELL teachers up to Indian River uh, because BOCES was putting on a presentation to help address the shifts in ELL. Um, we're gonna be meeting more frequently during the year because again, what we do is all of our ELL students are uh, for elementary in one elementary school at Allen Road, then at Rocks Middle, then the junior high and high school, and trying to make sure that um, we're meeting their needs, being that they're um, new to English language. And we have increased our numbers probably by 15 students this year alone from what we had last year, which is pretty significant in the district. You see for myself on a regular basis is monitoring class size and that's not only at the elementary level but also at the secondary level. Um, throughout the summer uh, meeting with secondary staff, high school, junior high, middle schools, um, coming back and when you see requests for 0.2 here or 0.3 there um, because what's happening is they're trying to make the schedule work so it may look good on paper when we're doing the numbers but then there's kind of this little dance that has to happen and we have to make sure that we're gonna have working schedules by the time school starts. And that's just an ongoing process. And with the elementary, as you can see, when students move into the district, it can, uh, if we're on the high end, it can offset some things to make the class size jump pretty significantly. My learning plan, with all the curriculum that was being done with Dawn, all of those uh, requests, following through my learning plan, and I think uh, 
as, as we've seen and some people have stopped by uh, for a district that has roughly 700 teachers uh, trying to make sure that all of those things get processed in a timely fashion. Um, just, just take some time. Summer school, uh, summer school was uh, vastly improved this summer. Um, there was a new administration up at the high school. Um, BOCES runs our summer school. They coordinate with myself. That, that coordination starts in February and it still has not finished with final grades as of, as of today. There's still some things that have to be imported, but uh, it's uh, just an ongoing process and trying to make sure if students have not been successful during the school year, have an opportunity in the summer to continue that uh, process. School tool is something that we're prepping for. It's going to be a complete changeover for our, our current information system of SIS. Um, we're meeting with BOCES and trying to uh, roll out and start all the prep work. Uh, we are probably one of seven districts left in the BOCES consortium that need to convert to school tool and um, they'll be coordinating with myself and a team within the district that will be working on um, having conversation and meeting with many of our staff to make sure that uh, that process goes as smoothly as possible and we will be converting in 2016-2017. Thank you. Good evening. <clears throat> I'd like to start by thanking you for this opportunity to share some of the things that we've been doing in human resources this year. And over the summer, we, uh, I, I was privileged to facilitate a team of uh, principals and teachers that uh, put the finishing touches on a performance interview process which is uh, the feedback has been uh, tremendous we've gotten some really good uh, uh, anecdotal evidence back from principals and from teachers in the process it's been eye-opening for many of our administrators as we've hired a lot of new staff that we'll talk about in a moment the uh, the performance interview process is something that's grown in the area other school districts have utilized it we have our own sort of starting process every candidate that comes in for a probationary a part-time or a long-term substitute position for a half year or more does a performance interview and I'll tell you it's it's been great it's allowed us to see people who are great candidates at the table interview that can't really do what it is they say they can do but it also allows us to see some people who are not so great at the table interview come in front of our actual students and just shine and we're able to, they might have not had an opportunity and that might not have been the, the top candidate for a position, but when we see them in action, we, it, it just puts this whole other level of information into the decision making process for our principals. And it's just, it's, it's been, I think, a real elevating process for our district. Uh, the next item, the, the staff snapshot is um, uh, part of the state's ongoing endeavor to keep everybody very busy and uh, just to give you a picture, uh, this, this pretty much just impacts our teachers. So we have over 700 teaching staff. The state required over 12 new data points per person. Each one had to be individually researched and inputted by hand. And so if you know anything about the format of our office, uh, Carol is in charge of data entry and so forth for the teaching part of the district. She spent pretty much every moment of her day throughout the entire month of July researching files, looking at uh, just this, this massive load of data so that we could hopefully get everything into the system and, and accurate so that uh, Donna Marie could load things up to the state for us. So it was, very, it was very challenging. We didn't get a lot of guidance from the state, but we had some people at BOCES that were very helpful and they actually came into the district and into our office and helped us out it was, it, it, and we got through it and we met all our deadlines, so it was great. As you can see, the next few items, professional development records, tenure database, mentor, monitoring certification, that's our regular summer work that we do. It, it, it's, uh, it's sort of our routine, but uh, after so many years, and those of you that have been on the board for a long time know, we have, we have had several years of some pretty massive cuts. So I'm very pleased to say for the first time in a long time, we have been able to add back staff, expand programs, and put some bodies back into classrooms and, and parts of the district. And you can see here, these numbers are pretty amazing. We've hired 73 instructional staff, that's probationary, long-term substitutes, and part-time people. 
12 new teaching assistants, and we hired 42 support staff. So if you think about the district-wide as a whole, we've added 127 people, new people into the district, which is a, an amazing turnaround after some years of fortunate cuts. So we've, we've had a very busy summer, and uh, hoping to continue some of these, especially that performance interview piece uh, into the first. I'm assuming there's no questions. Okay. Um, Donna Marie Norton. School accountability. I did bring a paper back up just in case it didn't work, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to not have to use that. This is a presentation I, I do every year um, for those of you that are, are new board members or those of you that like don't live and die by accountability like I do uh, and may not remember it from last year. Accountability is always a year behind. Uh, we don't uh, have the 14-15 um, data yet as far as this is concerned, so please realize that we're going to be talking about uh, the year prior to that. This is a Prezi, by the way, not a PowerPoint. So if uh, you get a little motion sick, just look away and then look back when the slide moves. Okay. So the first thing to tell you about is we are working on um, an ESEA waiver. And in that waiver, um, the goal from state ed changed. The old goal was that by 2014, all students would be proficient on every exam that state ed puts out. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen. <laughs> um, so there was... Uh, a revision made uh, to the goal. Seems like that happens every couple of years. New governors, new commissioners of education. Yep, it's kind of interesting. Um, so the state goal right now is that between 2010-11 and 16-17, uh, you can read this whole thing. And what they're actually looking for is, is just growth. So they want to reduce the number of students that aren't um, making um, proficiency on state exams. So kind of a long sentence for saying that. Schools are not identified any longer as CINI schools. You might have remembered that term, S-I-N-I, -I, School in Need of Improvement. We don't have that anymore. We now call schools and districts priority districts or focus schools, focus districts. And this little thing that will come into play a little bit later in my presentation is a local assistance plan. If a school has failed to make progress, adequate yearly progress, as defined by the state, in the same test, the same subgroup, for three years in a row, um, they're going to get identified as a school that has to create a uh, local assistance plan. This chart, and I, it might be a little bit clearer to you when you've got it on your iPads, um, it gets a little bit messy, but there are a couple of things I want to point out in this. There was a change in this last year, and it still exists in the new chart that came out. In the old chart, all students had the highest number on the chart, and then the subgroups had lower targets than that. And what we're noticing from what State Ed is putting out is that some of the groups actually have much higher targets than the all student group. I find that kind of fascinating, and I find it fascinating what groups actually have the higher targets. Um, it's based on how these student groups do across the state. So if a subgroup's doing very well, they're set a higher target. If they're not doing so well, then they're set a lower target. That's the ELA targets, and those are the math targets. So you can look at those a little bit closer if you want to. But the same sort of trend in the math um, that you saw in the ELA, where some of the subgroups have higher and some of the subgroups have lower. So the beginning part of the presentation, uh, there is a chart that I gave you so that you could kind of print it off, you know, Put it next to your calendar, next to your bedside, because you want to look at it all the time. Um, and I'm going to break it down. Oh, my goodness, you can't see the numbers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's kind of interesting. Oh, yeah, the reds. On the reds. Okay. Yeah. I'm so sorry, audience. Hmm. Let's see if we can maybe scoot that over to the other. I'm so glad I brought the back up.
We'll see if that works. Still can't see it. Ah. <laughs> okay. All right, well, let me explain it to you. Um, so I use a color system. Nope. Who knew? It doesn't like red. It's a projector. It's not. <laughs> oh, thank you. Okay. How many administrators does it take? No, no, don't go there. Don't do it. Okay. <laughs> it's still difficult to see, but, but it's better. That's the first time that's happened. I've given this presentation multiple years in a row. Interesting. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't remember that. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. So this is actually um, color-coded. The darker color is red, um, and those are areas where they did not make AYP. Um, the yellow you can see pretty clearly. Those are areas where AYP was made, annual year where progress was made, um, but we need to watch it. So we're close to the target, um, close to not making the target. So I always shade them as yellow, caution. And then green, um, the very much lighter areas, are the ones where, yay, we made it, we made it by a large enough margin where we don't have anything to worry about. Um, so you can see ELA, um, I'll point here, um, white multiracial, SWD stands for students with disabilities, economically disadvantaged um, is echo dis, and that's any child where um, there is a free or reduced lunch um, ever. That was our ELA. So this is 13, 14, you know, 12, 13, and then it keeps on moving down. So I've got four years worth of data. I do want to point out that there is an asterisk right here. This is kind of new. You'll understand why in just a second. The asterisk means that we did not make the participation rate for the student group. Um, participation rate requires 95% of students in that particular group tested. Um, we had overall about a 22% test refusal rate last year. So in some instances, that was enough to knock us out of 95% uh, participation. In this instance, um, students with disabilities in math. We found more refusals in math than we had in ELA, most likely. Um, I believe because the math test was later, parents had become informed about the ELA uh, test refusals, and therefore we got a few more for the math. Paul, did you have a question before I go on? Yes. This is science. This is the first time that we're starting to see areas in science um, that were, we didn't make AYP. Two, at least out of the four here, um, the students with disabilities and economically disadvantaged were because of participation rate. And then you also see um, AA is African American and then uh, white students. So it's not because we didn't get the number, it's no, because we didn't. Not for the African American or the white students. No, that's for their actual performance. Now, John asked me a question because I released this to the directors just, you know, so that they would have an idea of what I was talking about tonight. Um, there's been sort of that a rumor out there that students that are accelerated that did not take the eighth grade science but are in a regents instead, they don't have to take the eighth grade exam um, and were their scores counted in. I double checked, did the numbers myself, their scores were counted in and we still didn't make it. But they're counted in from based on That's true. Yeah. And they were all proficient because there are accelerated students. That would concern me if they weren't all proficient, but, but they were. So here's a breakdown um, by building. You'll see that not all of the subgroups, for instance, I've got Allen Road up at the top here. You have the all student category and then you have the economically disadvantaged category. Why aren't there African American? Why aren't there um, American Indian? Why aren't there other groups? And it's because there are less than um, 30 students in the third and fourth grade. Remember, for the elementary, it's only third and fourth grade. Um, so therefore, if you have lower than 30 students, they don't give you the number as a subgroup because every single student would skew the results so much that it's, yeah, it's not statistically significant. Under Bear Road, um, ELA, uh, all students, students with disabilities and economically disadvantaged students um, did not make participation. These numbers, it's very difficult for me to, to read these, and it, and it should be difficult for you, too, because when you have a large percentage of students that aren't taking the exam, it, it's hard for me to predict, you know, how they would have done or, or what they did, you know.
No, which ones are you talking about? From one year. 79 and 79. One right. Green. They expect growth. And when you don't show growth, you get nailed for it. But good catch, Scott. Here's Cicero. Cicero, um, everybody made it, but remember that uh, this 40 and this 63, we do have areas where we, we need to look at it. Now, you notice that 50, you know, became 40. There's different sizes of student groups there. So that's why that EMHO chart is, uh, all understands <laughs> why that changes. And then at Lakeshore, um, the economically disadvantaged students. Uh, not a large population of economically disadvantaged students at Lakeshore, but enough to be a subgroup. Roxell and Smith Road. This is an issue. So Roxell, for the past three years, you'll see, remember what I told you about a local assistance plan for three years, um, did not make AYP. And that's in the all student category uh, for ELA. Therefore, Roxell is a school that needs a local assistance plan. Dawn, myself, Alicia, and uh, the principal have a meeting. Is it this week? Tomorrow. Okay, have a meeting tomorrow. I knew that. <laughs> um, to, to start working on this because we have to write a plan for state ed. Smith Road, couple of areas that uh, are worth watching and then one area in the red, economically disadvantaged students. Hey, Donna Marie, I'm sorry, what does it mean to have to write a plan? I mean, do you have to do something differently? I just I, I, I'm not quite sure about it yet because we're having our preliminary meeting on it tomorrow. I mean, after that, we'll make reports to the board, but um, at this I have the documents, but they're this long, so um, I've only gone through some of it, <laughs> to be honest. Here's Gillette, uh, ELA, two areas that didn't make it, but remember, no plan because it has to be three years in a row, and then a couple of areas in math, uh, just to keep an eye on. Rocks Middle. So every category for ELA. I don't think there was, no, actually Gillette had a higher percentage of students that Rocks did. Um, but you'll notice that we have three in a row right here. I'm going to tell you why they are not a lap school in a little bit and uh, safety net that they were able to, uh, to squeak through. So they're not a lap school. The only lap school that we have for the district right now. But obviously we need to pay attention to Rocks Middle as well. And here's math. You'll see that the multiracial category um, has the double asterisk because they did not meet the participation rate of 95%. And this is an interesting category. <coughs> it's actually very low numbers. And if you look back four years, there weren't even enough students um, in that category to create a subgroup. There's a junior high. What I'd like to point out is that every category where the junior high did not make AYP was because of participation rate, not because of performance. I think that's striking. And then CNS. All green in CNS except for down here, uh, graduation rate. The graduation re requirement for state ed, uh, the limit is 80%. So if you dive below 80% in any of the subgroups, um, you will not make AYP. So students with disabilities for three years in a row um, did not make AYP. However, they are safety netted, not a lap school, because the overall graduation rate uh, for CNS is 88%. Significantly higher than state ed's average. But this doesn't necessarily mean that students aren't graduating. It just means they're not graduating, not graduating. on You get cohort. four years and one summer right. from the time that you enter ninth grade. They give you the summer after your senior year. Um, and many of our students do take five years, some six, uh, in order to graduate. So again, why are some buildings uh, lap and why are some buildings not? What state ed is calling them are progress filters. I like safety net because I think that's a term that we're all kind of familiar with. They applied progress filters 
two schools that had three years in a row of not making AYP. Rocks Middle and CNS were able to uh, meet a couple of these. Rocks L, unfortunately, was not. So first one, is the student growth above the state average? Okay. Rocks Middle was way above the state average. Is the subgroup making a 10-point gain? Did the subgroup reduce the gap by more than 10%? And then is the graduation rate above the state average, which is what CNS ended up doing? So Rocks L, unfortunately, none of those states are making. That's the fun of accountability. Any other questions? There's an answer to it. Um, our commissioner and I think. Right. I was we just thinking the same thing. The rates, we're still going to get the red box. Yeah, you're still getting the red box. More. I, I can't predict what the rules will be in a couple of years. It still counts as a win the L, and it's not, we're not being punished by It counts on the lot of very easy to read, nice color coded. <laughs> You're welcome. I, I especially appreciate the hoops because it seems as though that's what we're jumping through to do, you know, just what the state wants us to do. And that's, it just seems There's like. There's a lot of politics involved in this yes. educational institution. Madam Marie, I just want to thank you because um, even those of us that are involved in all this and see this come across our emails and so forth. It's confusing for us, but you do such a nice job of making it so that all of us can understand. Thank you. So thank very much. Okay. okay, we'll move into um, comments from the audience. We have uh, Michael McGrath here to speak about student volunteers on service day. Um, actually, if you can use the microphone, just because we do have people at home. Thank you. Good evening. I, uh, I'm a parent and a resident in the district, and I also serve on the board for the core federal credit union. And that afforded me a unique opportunity the other day, Friday, uh, our national day of service, to work with uh, a bunch of our high school seniors and uh, it left me uh, so impressed that, that I felt the need to come and address you and tell you about it and uh, uh, 37 of our high school seniors volunteered on Friday and uh, I was downtown in the Washington Square area and it was to help out some properties that were in need of help uh, you know needed a little uh, um, sprucing up so the students grab paintbrushes, they uh, rakes, shovels, and uh, they did an incredible job. I had the opportunity to work with seven students at our particular house, and uh, they called themselves the CNS Seven, and uh, they were uh, very impressive. Um, they, uh, you know, us as educators, we are striving for these 21st century skills, and they. They put them, uh, they exhibited, exhibited them in full force. Uh, you know, they were working together. They showed creativity. They were problem solving. And um, again, it left me um, very proud to be a, uh, you know, resident of this district. Um, they also, there were uh, a couple of residents there that were a little down on their, on their luck, as you can imagine. And they were a little intimidating. and. Uh, but these students, you know, their the grace and the uh, respect that they spoke to these folks was again um, inspiring. Uh, so I wanted to uh, thank the board and thank the superintendent for partner partnering up with uh, Core Federal Credit Union, one of our you know partners in the the community, and to. Uh, you know to stay the course with that because this was really impressive uh, I can't uh, you know the the classroom extended you know out into the community and uh, and I, I I saw a lot of real life skills in action so again I want to thank you and uh, and thank uh, you know the staff that works with these students because they were very impressive and then the the comments I received from the folks that were on the bus with them you know drove over on the bus they just said what you know, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, they were. So again, great job. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> yes. That is very good to hear. 
Um, so we have board committee reports. We look <coughs> like we made some progress in policy. Mary? Okay, um, the policy committee, um, we kicked off our new year with our first meeting on September 9th. Um, talked about how proud we were of our accomplishments um, last year and all um, look to have a great year this year as well. Um, got right down to business. We had 11 policies that we reviewed are on the agenda tonight for amendment adoption. Uh, one more that we're um, adopting without changes and two of the 11 we're tabling till the next. Our next meeting is October 13th. Thank you. Have you had a legislative meeting? Not, not till October. Administration, I um, had the pleasure of hearing positive feedback about that as well. Um, you know, I asked Annette later that day. You know, what are you hearing? You know, and she thought that everything was going quite well and then it was quite refreshing to hear um, somebody on the other side of the fence actually echo almost exactly what you had here that it was one of the best years yet so I want to thank you guys for the amount of work that you put into that Mr. Marizio as well thank you and then Miss Speech just a couple of comments thank you for sharing that Patrick because um, it does mean a lot to um, hear that we're hearing the same thing that we're thinking out there so it, when when we're all on the same page we can get a lot of work done for the benefit of our students um, we had a successful opening week last week uh, I visited all the buildings and kids were already settled in and learning and community building and learning about their teachers so it was very refreshing to see uh, I also want to mention um, a special thank you to um, Darcy Bowden and John Harnoy along with CNS alumni Victor, Victoria Bullock uh, Krakowski um, and several others that performed this past weekend at a performance called Remembering the Heroes, a musical tribute to the victims of 911. Uh, the concert was held on Sunday at Andrews Memorial United Methodist Church and it's great to see our staff and alumni um, participating I, on an annual basis. I think this is at least the third year uh, that they have done this. Yeah, John has put a lot of time into that event. Yes, it's a, it's a, a nice tribute to um, those involved in 911 and also for our community. So, Mr. McGrath, thank you so much for showing up tonight and in, in speaking. Um, I did not ride the bus with the students, but I did go down to the Washington Square area on Friday, and I can't really even describe with words uh, how heartwarming it was to see what I saw. First of all, you pull up and there was like nowhere to park because there were so many people and volunteers there. And then you see these groups of students in different colored t-shirts, and ours you know, were labeled CNS and Core Federal Credit Union. And the work that they were doing was phenomenal. They were blacktopping driveways, painting front doors. And when I say landscaping, I'm not talking about just trimming things. They were pulling out major, major um, bushes and so forth and replanting. So a great tribute to the community. I want to thank Core Federal Credit Union for uh, allowing um, us this opportunity. I hope it's something we'll be able to do on an annual basis. I was so proud of our kids and the staff that were involved. So um, we, ha we have some photos, so we'll share some of those with you and last but not least I do want to remind people that on the 24th it's a very important day and we need to think about the referendum vote and getting people out to vote we are finally 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 in a position to be able to hopefully repair the roof at the junior high that has literally been raining on equipment over there in the auditorium refurbishment of the gym floor as well as establishing a capital reserve fund that will help us in the future to make repairs that we need and all of this is without any tax impact. So please tell your neighbors, please come out on the 24th to vote. And um, just to piggyback on the, the vote on the 24th, we have a public hearing tomorrow night um, to go over that. Um, so you will see Don and Annette, I'm assuming here, yes. um, possibly myself or a replacement, depending on the 
if I get enough sleep tonight. If not, so. Um, and with that, I just want to congratulate um, Mr. Savota for being a dad for the sixth time. <laughs> Repopulating the <laughs> district. <laughs> <laughs> so we uh, move into the uh, routine action items. Do I have a motion to take A, B, and C as a group? Mr. Farfalia? Mr. Schuster, all in favor? That's unanimous. Okay, so we move into the discussion action items. The um, <coughs> appointment of custodian of voting machines goes along with the register and the registrars for the September 24th referendum vote. Do I have a motion to accept that? Ms. Scanlon, Ms. Cash, all in favor? Okay, that's unanimous. This uh, discussion action item B goes along with um, Mr. Nephew's presentation earlier um, in the meeting with the uh, recommendation to create a point two art teacher, uh, abolish a point two math and create three part-time teaching assistants. So I have a motion to accept. Ms. Scanlon, Ms. Cash. Then we move into, uh, all in favor of that? That's unanimous. Then we move into the acknowledgement of gifts. Um, this is amazing. If you look at the dollar amounts on some of these um, that are just uh, in both in C and D, um, the support that we receive from our community um, is, you know, amazing. So Cicero Elementary received a Lowe's Hero Project grant to make improvements to Cicero Elementary School grounds. This includes track repair and refinish, school sign repair and repaint, landscaping of the school sign area, picnic benches along with concrete slabs in the courtyard and benches with concrete slabs around the playground. Pressure wash, repair, and refinishing of the gazebo. Blacktop sealed um, the basketball courts and courtyard walkway. Mulch and weeded the play area. Approximately a cost of $11,400 plus labor. The second gift is the North Syracuse Education Foundation. Um, it has donated to the North Syracuse Central School District a Lego Education Story Starter Core Set Goldilocks and the Parade Flat Goldilocks and the Spinning Machine Mag Snaps Set Gears 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 Bristle Blocks Basic Set Snap Circuits Junior Little Bits Electronics and Snap Circuits for the Roxborough Road Elementary School and Lakeshore Road Elementary School Full Steam Ahead grant winner. These items are valued at $1,178.50. So the recommended action is that we accept with gratitude the above gifts. Mr. Farfalia, Mr. Leone, all in favor? That's unanimous. Okay, um, as we move into D, um, these are for our athletic complex, Aspen Athletic Club, has donated $3,000 annually for a five-year period to the North Syracuse Central School District School Board Sponsorship Contract. These, these funds will be placed in the district's special aid fund. Spears Meats Deli and Grocery Incorporated have donated $2,000 annually for a five-year period as per the North Syracuse Central School District sponsor, School Board Sponsorship Contract. These funds also will be placed in the district special aid fund. The recommended action is to approve the above resolution. Do I have a motion? Mr. Schuster, Mr. Harrington, I'm going to abstain from that um, because of my family members um, associated with one of those organizations. So all in favor? That's unanimous other than my abstention. Yes. I, I just want to mention that we are ahead of the game with the scoreboard um, due to the generosity of all of these uh, business organizations. We believe that we are going to have more than the amount needed for the purchase of the scoreboard and the additional money will stay in the special aid fund for future repairs or future replacement all associated with needs for that scoreboard in the future. So um, I'm pretty pleased that we're ahead of the game and being proactive. And, and thank you to all those organizations. Okay, um, as we discussed uh, with uh, Ms. Scanlon, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, and M are all policies that are either amended or re amended and readopted or um, 
just uh, readapted. So the recommended is to approve um, the amendment and readoption of, of all those policies. Do I have a motion to take them as a group? Ms. Scanlon, Mr. Leone, all in favor? That's unanimous. Okay, so we have uh, personnel for instructional support staff and administrative personnel. Do we have a motion to take A, B, and C as a group, or do we need discussion? Motion by Mr. Harrington, second Mr. Schuster, all in favor? That's unanimous. We have a motion to move into executive session for the purpose of hearing a parental appeal of a superintendent's decision to receive an update on negotiations with the directors, principals, middle managers, and maintenance operations bargaining units, to receive an update with two legal matters relative to potential litigation and the review and to review the employment record of five individuals with action to follow on the parental appeal. Do I have that motion? Mr. Marizio, Ms. Scanlon, all in favor? That's unanimous. There will be action to follow on the parental appeal, yes. Um, participation in government students, we can sign your paperwork. 